Okay, hello everyone. I'm back here again with another uh, music review here. And this one's going to be on both Blink-182's One More Time, and we're going to be reviewing some of the newer songs they put out on the part two to this album, which are kind of like songs, I guess, they decided not to use, I think, for uh, the original release, but they've released them now. They're on Spotify, they're on, like, everywhere now. YouTube, you can listen to them. They're out everywhere now for you to listen to. And they released, I think, a couple weeks ago, actually, now. And I've listened to part two in its entirety a couple times back now. And I've listened to the original release of the record quite a few times since its release. And I didn't really get this experience with Nine at all. Um, in California, maybe a little bit. Um, but with Nine, it wasn't really present. Nine was a record I just kind of listened to once, and I don't think I ever really listened to it again after that. I might have listened to it another time just to give it a second shot, but I don't think it's one I've really listened to that much. But this one, um, I actually have listened to this one quite a few times because there's a lot of material I actually enjoy on this record, you know. You got Anthem Part 3, which is like, you know, um, it has a really almost old skate punk kind of beat to it, which I really like, you know. And I think this song was the perfect opening song for the record, you know, just a three minute burst of uh, anthemic energy in this first song here. You know, it was the perfect song to start out the record with, and it's a great one, you know. And I think a lot of the catchy melodic guitar riffs are really uh, present in here in all the right ways. Unlike their past record specifically, California had a little bit more of like, you know, uh, the guitar implemented into a lot of the melodies and everything. But with this one, it was even more present, which I really enjoyed about it. I mean, you got songs like Edging where, you know, you got that one octave riff, the main riff of the song that really ca is catchy and everything and really is uh, implemented there and in songs like Anthem Part 3 as well. And you got it a lot on Part 2 as well with songs like No Fun, you know. And Part 2, I actually really enjoyed a lot too. A lot of these songs are actually not bad, honestly. You got No Fun on there, you got All In My Head, and If You Had Never Left, and the more melancholy kind of songs, like If You Never Left, are actually really good too. And a lot of, you know, the catchy guitar riffs are implemented in a lot of these songs, which I think is a good thing that Blink um, had in this record going. And the song One More Time as well is probably the best ballad they put out um, in a long time, probably since their self-titled release, I'd say. Man, you know, this song really um, is the perfect song to put on this record for, you know, the more emotional kind of song, because considering, you know, this record was kind of looked at as, hey, why not give it a shot one more time, which is basically kind of almost where the name comes from, you know, that kind of aspect that, you know, Blink just decided, hey, you know, let's see what we can come out with, let's get all get back together and see what kind of, you know, cool stuff we can, you know, come out with and everything, um, and put, you know, a lot of what we've been through into it, you know, including things like, you know, plane crashes that Travis was in, and, you know, Mark's cancer, which, you know, they kind of talk about and you know, in terms of like inspiring the song one more time and really the record kind of in general. And you know, there was a lot of hype behind this record and I can kind of get it, you know? I can kind of get it with some of the stuff, you know? It's not like their best record they've ever released, I don't think. Um, I still love Take Off Your Pants and Jack and Enema of the State and Dude Ranch. Those three are, all three of those are solid, you know. But this one actually is not bad for, you know, um, a band that's getting somewhat older. I hate to say that now, considering I've been a fan of them for so long, but, you know, they don't, they don't sound bad, bad for a band that's been around for, like, you know, almost going on 30 years now, or actually above 30 years now, considering it's 2024 and they started back in the early 90s. But yeah, this is Blink-182 proving they can still put out at least a fairly decent record, you know, that sometimes you go back to and you're like, dang, they actually still don't sound bad and they still can put out a pretty decent song, you know, that's good for, you know, certain moods you may be in, you know. They're, they got the more fun stuff and they got the more, um, you know, melancholy kind of vibes going in there too, which I definitely really enjoy. And they actually do it pretty well in this record. Because in the past ones, the lyrics were kind of lacking, and the instrumentation somewhat too, but this record really captured a lot of those melodies, I feel like, that were missing from the record 9. 
So this one, honestly, I'd probably give it around an 8. You know, it wouldn't be like a 10 out of 10. I'd say around an 8, though, would be a, probably appropriate for, you know, how I feel about this album. Let me know what you guys think about it, though, um, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.